Hi there, Robin here from Expert On. Today we're talking about Blaskin's Blade series of speakers. This happens to be the Blade 12A. Now the 12A features 8,000 watts on a D-class amplifier, just like a lot of speakers you might have seen or heard of or even I've reviewed on this site. Big thing is, that's not peak number. That's their actual RMS on this system. Also, it's built differently than a lot of other brands. And if it isn't, it has probably more to do with the way they advertise market or not supply us with enough information to really justify it. But what I can tell you is this is built really well for DJs who want to play either hip hop, dance, uh, techno, house, anything with an enormous amount of bass. If it's reggae, it doesn't matter what it is. This is going to be the type of speaker you're looking for. You don't just hear the sound come off of this. You'll actually feel the bass without even having to have a subwoofer. So if you added a sub, that would be endless. So for somebody who doesn't want to jump in and get a sub right away or wants to have probably one of the most bassiest pounding speakers, still having a good clear mid, mid bass and high, this is going to be one of those combinations that you're going to really like in a speaker package. So what are we talking about? We're talking about a speaker, and I've got the manual open here, with a frequency response at minus three dB, so just a little below unity on the mixer, of 55 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz. So definitely really good there. If you back off the dial just a little bit, you're gonna be at minus 10 dB on your system, and you're gonna get it to drop all the way down to 46. Why do you get better bass at slightly lower volume? Just off the bot, off the top. That's because we're going to take the pressure off of it, trying to do everything else, all that bass, mid bass, and allow it to get into some lower frequencies. So that's why when you dial it back a little bit, you're going to get that better response off of it. As well, the dB rating on this, so the uh, max SPL peak rating is 136. So, you know, average has been out there around 128 to 132. Uh, for anything in this price range or $100 more than this speaker. Uh, so this is actually showing up better and it, it's a pretty solid number. When I listen to this and when I have customers come to the showroom, people just come visit me here and listen to this, it literally drowns out any speaker next to it. Um, it's not talking bad about the other speakers. They're built differently for a different application. Uh, so this is not what they label some of them. Some of the other speakers label themselves as FRFR, full frequency flat response, which means really, really good if you're a musician, because uh, it's not going to add or take away anything from your actual original performance, which is awesome because then you can play around with it. But if you're looking for something where you're trying to make it sound better than somebody wearing a pair of earbuds or Dr. Dre headphones, that kind of stuff, you're gonna need something that can perform at that level and put on that kind of a show. So again, school dances, that kind of thing, right? Uh, if you're looking for a party speaker, so let's not just have it all for DJs. If you're looking for a party speaker for your rec room, for your workshop, for your man cave, for your garage, anything like that, and you want uh, to buy something that's going to pound and offer bass without you having to run up and buy subs, this is definitely, definitely one of those kind of speakers. So that being said, and before we get back into the manual, I do want to let you know, we do have it on our website because we're in Canada. So we have it down there. We're going to have the link down below. Uh, we're going to have Blast King's website uh, for now. As soon as we know we have it on Amazon, we're going to change the, the Blast King website to our Amazon affiliate page as well. So this way you'll have lots of options to be able to see what the price is where you live. Uh, that's a big important thing. I know I don't mention price because they can change at any time. That's the problem with you know stuff going across the border and manufacturing and they can do what they want. So to make it legit, we put the links. So that's gonna help. Uh, and also just before we get any further, subscribe. This way you get to find out when I do the 15 and you'll also get to find out about the subwoofers that go with it and the models above and all the other stuff from Blasting. So there you go, there's my little pitch. So back to the actual review of the product. So where are we up to? The drivers. Another one of those big things I like to talk about on this one here. If I seem excited, it's because I really am. Because you know, you, normally it's easy to say, oh, I'm gonna spend X amount of dollar, twice what the average speaker costs, and I'm gonna get this. But to get this without having to spend twice as much money is really what makes it exciting. Next one is it's the woofer, it's 12 inches. Now, 
take note of this part. The driver in here is four ohms. The horn, the tweeter on top, is actually two inches. If you compare that two inches to everybody else, again, $100 more and less, that's better. Also, the way it's mounted inside. I've took some pictures of the unit apart so you could see what the pieces look like inside and how they are. Two things you're gonna see dramatic right off the hop. The size of the tweeter in this thing is massive. The size of the magnet in the core on the back of this thing for the woofer is huge. Something more relative to something you would probably have in a car audio, but it's in this box. So just to give you an idea what kind of bass performance you're gonna get out of this. Now, the crossover, it's, a, it's not an active crossover. My, from what I can read right now and what I think I know is that we are, we're running a D-class bi-amp system. So it's a two amp, one to drive the horn, one to drive the, uh, the woofer at the bottom. Uh, it's got a set crossover at 1.9 kilohertz. So that's the fixed point that it's gonna cross over. And how they stop this thing from running away with the mids and the highs when you really crank it up, because that seems to be a problem if you don't have an active crossover, uh, is with this system here, uh, eight ohm tweeter, four ohm driver. That four ohm driver also kicks in because you feel it. If you want bass that you don't just hear, but you really feel it, like, I mean, your chest is, you're, you're shaking inside. That's what happens. That's like the car audio thing. That's what a lot of people want to have that experience, that feeling of the sound. And that's what's going to go on here. Um, on the back side, it's got a bunch of great features. But just before we do that, we're going to actually just pop the cover off here. Let's wibble and wobble it and get this thing to come off now. There we go. All right. So before we take a full look at the front, this is the cover. It's a nice solid gauge. It's got a good texture finish to it. It's got a little design arched into the bottom of it. Uh, and it basically molds into the actual unit. So we'll put that down in the front here. The assembly of the actual system. So yes, on the spec sheets, basically they say, this thing is constructed of plastic and the grill is con constructed of metal. Uh, but really what we're looking at is a lot of reinforcement and designed engineering into the structure. First of all, the ports are located at the bottom for the actual box. The advantage of that is it allows them to use that as a molded reinforcement around here. So you look at wood boxes, you'll see that there's a double frame structure put in place because we've got a big hole in the middle of it where we gotta put the woofer. Uh, the other thing is, is the amount of actual bolting points. So it's not, they're not using wood screws like they do on the cover, which basically can strip over time or can get loose. Uh, it's actually a threaded screw going into a nut on the backside locking the whole thing into place. That means that we're gonna have a very tight fit and it's not gonna get loose over time and it won't pop up because of transportation, you shook it too hard or something like that. Uh, also, if you look at the horn design, there's an added, most horns on most systems are set up to be 90 degrees across and 60 degrees, so 30 degrees higher, 30 degrees lower, 60 degrees across here. This by the actual molded manufacturer design and the placement of the actual horn inside is gonna be 75. So you do get a little bit more uh, when it comes to the top and down and how quickly it's gonna fill in and cross this sound with this sound. So it sounds really nice when you're closer to the unit. Why? Because when you want to, you can use it as a monitor. On the speaker itself, there's on the side, tapered on one side with rubber side feet on it which basically means I can take this guy, lay it down, and have it set up as a monitor. It's gonna work really, really well. If that's what you're looking for, you can do that. Another big feature into the design of the unit is how the handles are done. You've got a handle on the top and a handle on the side. There's the other handle on that side there. Uh, they're metal handles with rubber grips on them but they're also completely nut and bolt assembly into the inside body. We do have pictures of that, so hopefully I'm superimposing those on right now and they fit on the screen. This way you get a good justification of how that's all done. So really secure setup. Something's not gonna just yank off either, so that's a big, big plus. Number of screws again that are securing the front mounting plate, which is where all the drivers are located, uh, to the main body of the box. Fully loaded. They didn't spare any expense. That is really well done. They've got four screws across, then they layer it down, then they arch it around the bottom, 
and come across the very bottom of the unit as well, making sure that it's really tight and well installed, something that's not gonna come loose over time either. All right, so design is very important as well on the box. Uh, to have the actual angles and everything that's tapered on the actual unit helps keep the whole box itself solid and keeping the mass of, of the sound inside and pushing through the ports the way it should be. Uh, also, you notice there's no venting on the back. This is part of why it's called blade. This is my amp plate that's exposed to me. So it's dropped in about an inch and a half. You cannot, if this goes on its backside, nothing is gonna get touched on the back of this unit. The bulk of the amp is built inside. So we have pictures of it from the inside. It's huge on the inside, but on the backside, all we see is the sliver. It's all bolted from inside to the back assembly instead of being just a big mounting plate on the back with all the screws and everything on the backside. Uh, because it's smaller, if you've ever heard a lot of speakers that have large amp plates mounted to the back, you do get a lot of residual vibration and noise off of that amp plate. None of that happens here. Rock, rock solid. So that's really cool. Uh, I think that's a real neat way to actually get a job done and put something on the product. Uh, something else that makes this box unique, uh, it's not the only company that's done this, of course, there's lots of companies that do this, but you don't see it too often, is when we look at the bottom, we have two pole mounts, one straight, the other one's on a slight angle. Uh, so if I need to set up four of these in a large space, uh, and I need to crank them up real high, the ones that for closer up use, let's say for the dance floor right around me, I can have those speakers set up in the second hole, which puts the speaker on a slight angle. So the sound comes shooting down on the audience. If we take a closer look of the amp plate itself and the options and features, this is where it's not just for DJs. I mean, maybe you're setting this up as a far away as a, you need a speaker in a vestibule area or something like that. It's got Bluetooth on it. So Bluetooth is version uh, 4.0, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it's 3.0, but 4.0. So we're not gonna get compression. We're gonna get long distance pairing capability to it. You do have to push this button and no one's gonna accidentally just sneak up on you and push that button. You gotta not just push it, but you gotta really push in on it to get that actually to start pinging. Uh, it's a direct connection once you're there to the speaker itself. So that's gonna mean you don't have to worry about these line inputs interacting with that. You just basically take your Spotify on your phone or tablet or whatever your playlist is and off you go. Uh, you control all the volume, everything from your phone or tablet straight onto the speaker. Uh, we did it, it sounds pretty good. Uh, scary, remember if you're gonna do that and you're gonna use this with Bluetooth, make sure you turn the volume down on your phone before you start to play, because it'll just, it'll jump on you like crazy. Um, after that, you get DSP settings, digital sound processing, so you can contour the speaker the way you want. You can have it in a flat mode, you can have it in a contour where the bass and the highs are jacked up a little bit. Uh, you can also have it in a, what's the next one? It was a speech mode, that's a speech mode. Uh, and then there's a crossover built into it. Um, so this way you can put it in with a subwoofer and I, if I'm not mistaken, it cuts it off at about 80 Hertz. I could be off on that number a bit, but they didn't state that. So that's what we're looking at there. Then you actually have your inputs, which are combo jacks. So you can use quarter inch or XLR and you have a choice because there are buttons on both those line inputs. You can either have it set as a microphone or you can have it set as a line. So if you are gonna use this with a controller or a mixer or any other piece of equipment, you definitely wanna have it set as a line. The only time you wanna have it set as a microphone is when you physically plug a microphone into the back of this unit. That's how that works, or a wireless receiver, that sort of thing. Then you have your output, and then with another button. Why do they give a button on the output? Well, you can either choose it to be just line two as an output, so it's whatever's going in line two is gonna come out your mixed out, which is kinda crazy, but you can do that or you can have as a mixed stereo output. So your choice, I mean, if it was just line two, maybe I'm plugging my, my laptop or something straight into here and I wanna keep it in stereo so I hit that button and it dedicates the second speaker as uh, line two, which might be the left channel only. So that could be one of the scenarios or maybe you need one to have it as a remote and you just wanna have the music, you don't wanna have talking on top of it. Maybe that's why you're doing it, I mean, but there's an option, which is kind of, you know, cool, I guess, because, you know, it's an option that I hadn't had on one of the other ones. It's something you would normally see on a digital setup. So there you go. So when it comes to voltage selection, uh, it does have a 100, yes, 100 to 240 volt 
auto selector built into it. You just need to have the appropriate power cord. It's gonna automatically take care of everything else. And like most units, just below the power cord itself is a tray that carries the fuse to replace if you blow the fuse. That pretty much covers everything I can think about. There's one extra thing, and that's what these dots are here. There's two more on top and two more at the bottom. Those are fly points on the actual unit. There's five all together. If I'm going to permanently be mounting this in a bar, a pub, a restaurant, something like that, I would hang it from the ceiling, and uh, then I'd be able to pull it back. Because normally, I, personally, when I do install, I like to have four of them. I like to have four shooting across the actual space, and then I like to have two pointing towards the dance floor. Uh, and that allows for the whole room to run at 80, 90 dB, no problem. Of course, when you get speakers up to 10, 12 feet up in the air, you probably are gonna want subs anyways. But five fly points is really nice. So it gives me a lot of versatility with the product. And there we go, that's the Blast King. So we're gonna set it up in the back, give it a sound try. You've seen a whole bunch of pictures of it inside. We've taken the cover off. We've had a great look at it on the inside. Uh, there's nothing bad to really talk about it when it comes to the product at this point. Uh, expectation is here. Uh, the delivery of the product is way higher than your expectation. So if I'm talking it up, is because I don't feel bad about talking it up. It's going to meet expectation. That is for sure. Uh, you would have to spend maybe twice as much money. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, yeah, but this is great, this is awesome. There's lots of awesome product out there. But you get a chance to listen to this. You're gonna go, wow. If that's what you're looking for, a speaker with a solid amount of bass in it, but still being clear on the mids and on the highs with a good even diffusion of sound, this is gonna be one of those kind of pre speakers you're gonna to wanna to look at, listen to, and probably even buy. So remember, all the links are there. We're gonna to cut to some, uh, me trying to play some demo music on it. Remember, you listen to this on your phone and your tablet. So there's only an expectation of like, ooh, uh, okay, it's not so bad. So if you'd like to listen to it, by all means, find a showroom that has it. Uh, again, we're working with Blast King as we speak, as I'm making this video, to try and make this product more available because I think it's a big win. give a little recap here first of all i forgot to mention that speaker weighs 46 pounds that puts basically 27 pounds on just the front the, the woofer and the tweeter and the front assembly all in the front the rest of it's just basic huge amount of weight just to get the whole thing together so that was very you know i shouldn't have forgotten that so i thought i'd mention it now what we are going to do today is condenser style microphone right here we're actually using the X-Vibe uh, U3C, which has got phantom power on it to get it back to the mixing board. I'll be off to the side, we'll play some songs and we'll go from there. That's pretty much about it. And then from there, we'll just do a wrap up at the table. I certainly hope that, that you like the actual demo. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I try and answer those once a week and hopefully I pick your question and get into the videos so we can do all of that. Uh, remember, the speaker's not for everybody. 
Um, if you're a band, that sort of thing. Depends on the music. If you're playing salsa or stuff like that, maybe you want this. But uh, if you're uh, if you're just a regular band playing '80s classics, that sort of thing, there's a lot of options out there that might be a little bit better than this. But if you're looking for a big pounding bass, big full volume, and you're looking for a speaker to get really excited over, uh, and you can't wait for it to show up, or you can't wait to get down to the showroom to listen to it, this is probably going to be one of those speakers you're going to want to look at. So there we go. We'll see you on the next video. Remember to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button because that's always important. That's what lines us up and lets us know that we're actually doing the right thing. Hit the bell. Hit the like button. Like, like, like. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.